praise that you deserve, Lord. You woke us up this morning, Lord Jesus, Father God. You place us you put clothes on our back shoes on our feet food on our table lord jesus father god a roof over our head lord you supplied all our needs lord so we thank you lord jesus father god because you are so gracious lord towards us and you love us so much lord so we love you so much lord we thank you, Lord. We just pray that you continue to have your way in this church, Lord. Let your spirit rain down, Lord Jesus, Father God. Yes, Lord, we ask that whoever came this morning, Lord, that they don't leave the same, Lord Jesus, Father God. That your mighty hand touches their hearts, Lord, in their minds, Lord, in their spirit, Lord Jesus, Father God. We thank you for turning it around, Lord, in our lives, Lord, and placing our feet on solid ground, Lord Jesus, Father God. So we thank you so much, Lord. We praise your holy name, Jesus, Father God. We ask that you just continue to raise a church, Lord, that is bold, Lord Jesus, Father God. That is not a shame, Lord, to go out these four walls, Lord, and preach your word, Lord, and share your message, Lord, the message of the cross, Lord, with everyone that we come across, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you for our pastor, Lord, and our first lady, Lord Jesus, Father God. We thank you for leaders, Lord, that are great examples, Lord. Leaders that really love you, Jesus, and love your word, Lord. And not only that, but they abide by your word, Lord. We want to be not just hearers of your word, Lord, but we want to also be doers, Lord Jesus, Father God. So we thank you for the great examples, Lord, that you have blessed us with, Lord, Jesus, Father God. So we ask that you just continue to be with them, Lord, as they continue to do ministry elsewhere, Lord, and continue to strengthen them, Lord. When adversary may come upon them, Lord, we ask that you just give us the strength, Lord, to, to strengthen them as well, Lord, in prayer, Lord and encouragement lord jesus father god we ask that you just comfort them lord whenever they may need it lord jesus father god whenever they may feel stressed lord or overwhelmed lord we ask that you just continue to give them that comfort lord continue to give them that peace lord that surpasses all understanding lord jesus father god so we thank you so much lord and we love your holy we love your holy name lord we love your word lord jesus father god so we thank you so so much Jesus in your holy name Lord we say amen Lord Jesus not unto us come on somebody say not unto us how many of you guys came to give God glory come on how many how many of you love him all the honor all the glory all power belongs to him so this morning we go before your throne, Lord. My Bible says, let us come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Are you in a time of need? Come on, do you need them? Come on. My Bible says that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek. So this morning we come to give you glory. We come to give you honor. We come to worship you, Father. We worship you, Jesus. Let's continue to meditate on the Lord. goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in your house forever. Just continue, just continue to meditate on the Lord. came to give God praise. Come on, how many guys came to worship the Lord this morning? For his mercy, for his goodness, for his faithfulness. Hallelujah. 
Come on, church. Has the Lord been good to you? Is he still a healer? Is he still a provider? Hey, is he still a strong tower? Hallelujah. Come on, church, if you believe that, let's stand to our feet as we go before the Lord in a time of praise and a time of worship. Hallelujah. Lord, we come into your house this morning to worship you, to give you glory. Your word says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. So, Lord, we stand on your word. We stand on your promises because all of your promises are yes and amen. So, Lord, you're faithful. Your mercies are new every morning. We say thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Lord. Lord, we praise you. We lift up your name. We exalt you. You are high and lifted, high and lifted up in this place. Hallelujah. And we pray all these things in your name. And all God's children shout. Come on, somebody shout yes. Somebody shout amen. Here we go.
to the Father and declare yes. that He is good. Lift your voice. You are good. In the morning I say you are good. And in the evening I say you are good. You are good. Make that your testimony one more time. You are good. In the morning I say you are good. And in the evening I say you are good. You are good. mercy is everlasting and his truth and yes, throughout all generations Thank you for your goodness, make some noise for, your for the mercy, Lord, Lord. saints and angels.
You may be seated, you may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray, church. Hallelujah. We are here. Eta tau ya te o ele vi inga, mai le va vau e o la va le fa va vau, mai le amatanga e o la va le ngata anga, o o e o le a le fa ma le o meka, o le amatanga o me le le u ma la va, e te fa u ba tia me le anga, Alleluia, vi ia o e, and the Lord passed by Moses. And he proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, faithful, and goodness in, faith, in truth. Alleluia, Father, we continue to praise your holy name. For you pleasure in the praises of your people who fear you, O oh Lord. And those, O oh Lord, those who hope in your mercy, O oh Lord. It is your mercy, O oh Lord, your unlimited mercy that brought us here into this house of worship and into this house of prayer, O oh Lord. We come to you, O oh Lord, in the heart and the attitude of meekness, O oh Lord. For we know that you beautify the meek with salvation, O oh Lord. That you lifted the meek up and you cast the proud down into the ground. You teach us, O oh Lord, for blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God here on earth. You continue to teach us, O oh Lord, to build your kingdom in the humble heart, in the meek heart, in the heart of righteousness, 
in the heart that is centered in the righteousness of God, who is in Jesus, by his grace, through his faith, that you save us, O oh Lord, and you justify us by your righteousness through your Son, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Your grace, O oh Lord, is sufficient for us. Your grace abound in this very sinful world, O oh Lord, this world that is full of violence, O oh Lord. Violence is everywhere we see and hear, O oh Lord. We know that we need more of you, God, and less of us people. More of your peace, the peace that is genuine, the peace that is beyond understanding, the peace that the world cannot give to us. We give you the body of Christ, O oh Lord, the church, O oh Lord. You are the leader of this church, O oh Lord. You are the leader of all the Christian churches, O oh Lord. And in the name of Jesus, we speak boldness. We speak power of your word to speak into the darkness that this violence must stop that this killing of each other must stop, that we cannot continue to hate others because of the color of their skin or for what they believe in or where they come from, O oh Lord. You say to us and you teach to us, O oh Lord, you were compassionate when you were preaching in three and a half years of your ministry. You look out into the multitude and your heart was full of compassion. For you see that the work and the labor is growing. It's much and the, and the laborers are few. We believe in our hearts, O oh Lord, that every word from your holy scripture that you teach to us, yet to shine in our hearts, that you will tell us to open that word for seek him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all things shall be added unto us. That is all we have, O oh Lord, is that righteousness. It's the righteousness of your word that sanctifies us, O oh Lord, that separate us from the world, O oh Lord, that we pray for this world and not to, we pray to love one another and to love our enemies. Pray for one to another is your lesson that you teach us today for Sunday school. Thank you for that word. You teach us to be more like Abraham, obedient in your word, faithful in your word, trustful in you, Lord God, believing in you, committed in all of your ways, O oh Lord. Continue to shine us, O oh Lord. Shine us because you are in us. It is your spirit, O oh Father God, that lives in us, that teaches us to keep this temple clean, O oh Lord. Clean this inward and outward. Speak life unto other people, O oh Lord. Thank you for all that you do for us. Every breath that we have, O oh Lord, that we use it to praise you, O oh Lord. Everything that has breath, let it praise you, O oh Lord. Praise God. We continue to praise the name of Jesus Christ. There is no other name that save us, O oh Lord. Not above the heavens or below the earth or on earth. Only the name of Jesus Christ. The name that we confess with our lips and believe with our hearts that God raised him from the dead and we shall be saved. Hallelujah, Jesus. We lift up our families and our friends who are watching online or wherever they're at, oh Lord. We ask that your, your spirit stir them, oh Lord. That your ministry of sharing your love, oh Lord, continues to love one another, oh Lord. For that love dwells in us. For brethren, let us love one another. For whoever loveth is born of God. 
and knoweth God. We know, O oh Father God, that there is no other God before you. You are the gracious and the merciful God, long-suffering, who is patient with us. And you are faithful, and you continue to show us your goodness and in your truth, O oh Lord. Your word, O oh Lord, when, when Pastor Alfred comes to preach this morning, O oh Lord, your word sanctifies us, your word cleans us, your word heals us, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Continue to show us that way, O oh Lord. For there is no other way to heaven. There is only one way. It is through you, Jesus. For you are the way, the truth, and the life. And no man, no one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah. We lift up the ministry here in SCF, the worship team, the Sunday school ministry, the uh, feeding of the poor on Wednesdays, the men's ministry, the youth, hallelujah, you continue to bless this courtyard, you continue to bless this house of worship, we, you continue to show us to keep on moving forward, keep on being stirred by the Spirit of God, for it is not by might, nor by power, but it is by my Spirit, speaketh the Lord, or Almighty God. Your mighty power, O Father God, is like a firmament that covers us. It stretches from heaven to earth, from earth to heaven, from the sea to the shining sea, from the mountains into our own family, in our, into our own land. Hallelujah. We continue to give you all of our families, O oh Lord. We ask for your forgiveness, O oh Lord. There is the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. That is our, our confirmation and our victory, O oh Lord. You are great, O oh Father. Blessed is thy holy name, Jesus. We lift up our Torahina, Pastor Alex, and Faletua Lucia, who's constantly on the move for you, Lord, on the move for your work, on the move by your spirit, helping other churches in Pittsburgh and all around the Pulenga and all around the district, oh Lord. Thank you so much for this man of God, man of faith, man of good examples, O oh Lord. You continue to teach us that your faithfulness and your praises will change your attitude. It will change you to come closer to me and know who I am, O oh Lord, who you are, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. For St. George, O oh Lord, the church planting in St. George in, uh, in Las Vegas, in the northern Pulenga, in the southern Pulenga, Pulenga in Hawaii, Alaska, Seattle, wherever your word is being preached and moved, O oh Lord, it is you, it's the purpose and the reason of why we do everything. Let your word grow in us today. Let your word come into our hearts and stir us up like a double-edged sword. It won't return void. It's going to be full of glory, full of power, full of faithfulness. Increase your wisdom in us. Thank you for the youth um, leaders, O oh Lord. Continue to use these young men, O oh Lord. The future of this church, this country, this world, O oh Lord. Use these minds. Conform their minds into your word, O oh Lord. Transform their hearts by the truth in your word, O oh Lord. Bless your holy name, Jesus. We claim and speak the word of Jesus, and we are forgiven. Uh, be with us from the beginning of our service all the way to the end. And we lift up our visitors that are here this morning. Let your words sit in their heart 
and stir in their hearts, stir your love, and give them that power, oh Lord, to come out and use them for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We give you all of your glory, your honor, your power. Amen and amen. Such a good uh, um, praise and worship. And our, our Sunday school has been really, um, and Bible study has been really just digging in to uh, um, our praise. And so uh, um, just uh, with more understanding, better understanding, man, praise and worship time has just been so, so good. So it's so good to be in the house of the Lord with each and every one of you. I just greet each and every one of you in the name of our Heavenly Father. Thank you for choosing SCF as your place of worship. And so as we offered up a sacrifice of praise this morning during praise and worship, another way that we can continue to offer up a sacrifice is through our tithes and our offering. There's a story in uh, the Gospels in the book of Luke chapter 21, and I'm just going to read the first four verses. And it says, Jesus looked around and saw rich people dropping their gifts in the temple treasury. And he also saw a very poor widow dropping in two little copper coins. He said, I tell you that this poor widow put in more than all the others. For the others offered their gifts from what they had to spare of their riches. But she poor as she is, gave all that she had to live on. See, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, it says, each man should give as he has decided in his heart. He should give, he should not give wishing he could keep it, or he should not give if he feels he has to give. God loves a man who gives because he wants to give. Just like the story of the poor widow, she gave out of everything. And it wasn't a lot compared to what everybody else was giving. But see, Jesus says she gave more because it was from the abundance of her heart. Just like we read in 2 Corinthians, um, God is looking at your heart. He's not looking at your riches. He's not looking at what you have um, to spare. A lot of the times we treat Jesus like the waiter and waitress, when we pay our bill in cash and they give you the change and you're like, okay, I'll, whatever's left over, I'll give to you, Lord. God is just looking at your heart and he wants to pour out a blessing. He wants to bless you, church. For those of you tuning in online, God wants to bless you. But it starts with where your heart is at. If your heart is set on God, God is going to bless you. So I encourage you, church, this morning, whether you give here online or here physically, whatever way you do, it is from the abundance of your heart. It's not about the amount. It's about the heart. And God wants to call you blessed. So church, I encourage you this morning, give from the heart in Jesus' name.
let's pray for the tithes and the offerings collected this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the sacrifice that your church has offered up to you this morning, not just our praise, but also in our giving. Lord Father God, you see those who gave, Father God, and you see their hearts. Lord, you said that you would uh, pour out a blessing when we test you in this, Father God. So, Lord, as your children come, to, uh, come, Lord Father God, as they gathered here, whether they gave in the baskets here physically or online, whatever way they gave, Lord, you see it. Lord, your promises are yes and amen, and your faithfulness is true. So, Lord, we just give it to you. We know that we are investing in your kingdom, that it is better to invest in your work than anywhere else. So, Heavenly Father, have your way. Let us be good stewards to the, um, to the finances of your church, Father God, that we will continue to uh, take care of your, uh, of your church, Father God, and also continue to reach the community, continue to reach people, continue to plant churches, Lord Father God, through the giving of your people. So bless them, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. There are a few um, exciting announcements that are coming up, and man, we hit the month of August, and it already feels like the end of the year is just like right there. It's like right up, right around the corner, and so we have um, our uh, our section um, youth is going to be hosting the maintain the flame youth conference august 26th and 27th and so it's going to be in pittsburgh california and man it is so exciting i don't know about you but i am excited to just go and be in the presence and if you've never been in you know in a youth service with just a bunch of youth people like praise and worship they get down and so I'm just so excited to just be in the spirit of worship with young people that will just make you feel young again. So if there's somebody here who just feels like they're getting old, come join us August 26th and 27th and join the youth. Um, our section leader, uh, Pastor Alfred, has uh, worked diligently with all of the section um, youth uh, leaders and um, we are just excited. We have our district youth director that is going to be coming, Pastor Matt. Talmua. And then also we have the National Youth Director of the Assemblies of God, uh, Pastor Josh Wellborn, who is going to be there as well. And so, man, we are excited. The young people, the leaders, our section is praying and fasting for a spirit-filled conference for our young people because I'm telling you this, we need God in this next generation. Amen? So continue to pray for them. If you can't make it, just keep praying for them because we need all the prayers for our young people. Amen. Also, we have our missions trip to St. George, Utah in uh, the first weekend of September. That's September 1st through the 5th. And so if we are having signups, if you want to join us to go to our church plant in St. George, the first Samoan Assembly of God Church planted in St. George, Utah. There's already 10 plus families committed to the church and we haven't even planted the church yet. It hasn't even started yet. That's how you know there is a hunger there and that the Holy Spirit is moving. And so that again is September 1st through the 5th. Come see me. I am uh, taking, the, I am responsible for the signups and I have more information. So if you want to go, Come and see me and we'll get your name on the list and I'll give you more details. And then we have our weekly schedule, Sunday mornings, every Sunday, 8.30 a.m. We have our Sunday school, Christian education for all age groups. So we, have, we are again in the uh, lesson of praise. And so today we talked about praise through, um, um, our, uh, 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 through trials and tribulations. And that no matter what we go through, God is still faithful and he's still good and he still deserves the glory. And then also on Sunday we have our corporate service where each and every one of you are here today. And for those of you tuning in, 10 a.m., 
we have our corporate service every Sunday morning. And then on Mondays, we have Mini Sermon Monday in the evening. Tune in online uh, via Facebook or Instagram, Mini Sermon Mondays, just to get that word of encouragement that you need to get you through the rest of the week. And then we have Hour of Empower for our women's every Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. in the book of Ezra. We just finished a great lesson in Nehemiah, and now we're in Ezra, and I'm telling you, there is so much growth and in and deep conversations happening. So join us, reach out to myself or Sister Nati for uh, more details about our Hour of Empower every Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Wednesday, Midweek, we have our uh, Helping Hands Ministry from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., which is our food giveaway or food distribution. So join us if you want to volunteer. You are more than welcome to come and help us as we distribute food to our community. Also on Wednesday, we have midweek service or our Bible study at 6.30 p.m. every Wednesday where we just get to deep dive and uh, learn more about the Word of God. I don't know if you have noticed there's a trend here, but it's all about the Word of God. Amen? It's all about going deeper and learning and asking questions and having discussion questions about the Word of God. And then we have Friday where we have at 8 a.m. early in the morning, Gyra Project happening right in our backyard. If there is anything you need, come see Brother Ray. He has just about everything you could possibly need, amen? And then we have our next gen youth service at 6 p.m. in the evening. Bring your youth, bring your children. If you don't have a, a card to get here, if you're tuning in online and saying, I want my kids to go to next gen at SCF, please contact any one of the pastoral staff, um, Brother James, uh, who is the youth leader, whoever it is, we will get your children here. Saturday mornings, 7 a.m. prayer meeting. We are calling all prayer warriors to come together in one heart, one mind, in unity, one accord, to offer up prayers for our families, for our children, for our schools, for our community, for our churches, for our leaders. And we are asking for all the prayer warriors to come who are believing and having faith and spirit filled to join us prayer meeting every Saturday at 7 a.m. May you be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you, God. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for bringing us together, Lord. We thank you for the for uh, the saints, Lord. We thank you for a community, Lord. We just thank you, God, for allowing us, Lord God, just to take part, Lord God, in the ministry. Lord, your word says uh, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, And I thank Christ Jesus, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. So, Lord, we thank you, God, for putting us into the ministry. Lord, we thank you for counting us faithful lord and so that is our desire lord to be faithful to you O oh lord and so we thank you god we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your grace lord it is your grace that sustains us lord you give us grace for the race and so we thank you lord we thank you for giving us the endurance we thank you for giving us the strength lord your word says you will receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness in jerusalem judea samaria and to the ends of the earth so lord we just say thank you god we say thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray, your precious name, and all God's children shout. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Church, Hallelujah. man, it's so good to be back. I know I've been out for a couple weeks, you know, uh, duty calls, you know. You know, uh, when you sign up, when you raise your right hand and tell Uncle Sam, <laughs> yes, you know, he's going to take full advantage of it. And so Uncle Sam has called me and said, hey, you need to get over here and uh, start uh, netting some pallets and start sending some things uh, you know, uh, all over the country. So I was over there on base, um, serving our country and just, you know, being on, on orders and so forth. And then also uh, two weeks ago, I had the honor and the privilege 
excuse me, to minister at our, our, uh, our sister church in Santa Clara uh, of uh, the newly elected uh, presbyter for this section, uh, Toyina Suesteo uh, and First Lady Nafu. So they invited me and I got to preach. And so I just had a great time uh, just in fellowship with the, 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 uh, uh, the elders and the, the, the young people in Santa Clara. So it was just a great time of fellowship and uh, they, they took care of me and my wife. And we just, uh, you know, one thing about going to Santa Clara's church is, man, they always serve the heavy stuff after. And so, and they caught me at a bad time because I was fasting. So I was in fasting, man, and uh, man, they served the, man, they served the bovi and all that. And so I had to respectfully decline, but even though, you know, I just felt that I was being tested. But praise the Lord. The Bible says the testing of your faith, and it produces patience. So thank God for that. And so I just want to thank our church for just stepping up and just being, uh, just being proactive. Praise the Lord. So our pastoral staff, thank you, Pastor Lele, Pastor Yuasa, Pastor Nora, for, for uh, stepping up and just being active. I also like to give a special thanks uh, to our church members who have uh, just been so diligent and so uh, faithful to the work of the ministry. Um, and so as we all know, we've been saying this for you know the past couple months, the shelters are coming, the shelters are coming, the shelters are coming. And it's like, yeah, we hear this all the time, we hear it all the time, but uh, it's, it's coming. Right. And so we've been we had to uh, clear around the back, make some space. And uh, I'd like to give another special thanks to our, our brother Norman and then uh, sister uh, uh, Sela for for volunteering their time, their effort, their resources and their uh, materials to help pull the trailer that was in the back. And the trailer has been such an eyesore for the past five years or however long it's been. But uh, we were able to remove it, and you know why? And it's because of the heart. It is because of uh, the commitment that our church and that we are all in. Praise the Lord. Someone say all in. All in. Praise the Lord. And then we are, we, have, uh, uh, we are bought into the vision, and we are committed to the work of the Lord. And so we are able to pull the trailer. We are able to clear the back, and so that the, those who are uh, working in the back can take pictures. They can start doing some measurements because we plan on putting 12 uh, shelters, uh, 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 pallet homes, so that we can house the homeless. Praise the Lord. Is that is that not a good thing? Yeah. Is that a good thing yeah. to give people shelter? You know, that's a, you know, I, I would be excited if I was hearing this. That's a that's great news. Doesn't it bother you to see people out there sleeping on the streets and sleeping in cars and so forth? And so what we're trying to do, we're trying to do a good thing. And my Bible says, "Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season." We shall reap if we do not lose heart. Praise the Lord. And so I just want to uh, just uh, give a special, a special thanks to everyone uh, who has been committed and been faithful to the work of the Lord. How many guys are ready to receive the word this morning? Amen. Come on, how many guys are ready to, re uh, to receive? Amen. Come on, someone say, I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive. And so we don't just read the word. We don't just read the Bible. We feed off of the word. We feed off of the Bible. Praise the Lord. This is our daily bread. Now, how often do you eat daily bread? Daily. All right. If it sounded like a trick question, it kind of was. We eat our daily bread daily. The Bible, the word of God is not cake. You only eat cake on special occasions. Or you're supposed to not eat cake. But for those who do eat cake every day, you know, I, you know, might want to consult your doctor. But Jesus says, give us this day our daily bread. Because man shall not live from bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so the word of God, that is our daily bread. Praise the Lord. So for our Polynesian church, man shall not live on bovi alone. From pisupo and in the, in the kalo. But we live we eat we feed off of the word of god because Amen. the word of god it is the lamp into our feet it is the light into our path the word of god that we have hidden in our heart that we might not sin against thee so praise the lord i don't know about you but i am ready to receive if 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 you're not ready to receive man i'm ready to receive this message praise the lord and so the title of my message is outsiders someone say outsiders how many of you have ever been casted out? How many of you have, have been experienced not being accepted or being rejected? 
Well, I'm here to tell you that as a, a Christian, as a believer, we have to be comfortable with being rejected. We have to be comfortable with being outsiders. How many guys know that if you're a Christian, you are an outsider? Praise the Lord. Okay, what are you talking about, Pastor Alfred? Well, let's get into some Bible. John chapter 15. If I take the cap off. John chapter 15, and we're going to read from 18 to verse 21. If you have it, follow along with me. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is, no, is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, Jesus, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake. Because they do not know him who sent me. Jesus says, he's telling his disciples, hey, if they hate you, it's because they hated me first. Praise the Lord. So Jesus is giving his disciples a, a warning of the hatred and rejection you will face for following Jesus. And see, Jesus hoped to comfort the disciples with the knowledge that the world's hatred was first for Christ. Now, how many followers of Christ do I have in the house? How many truly love him? And so Jesus is giving you a warning and saying, hey, if the world will hate you because they hated me. Despite the miracles, despite the life that he lived, despite the great, uh, tremendous and remarkable things that Christ did, they world, the world still hated him. And you know what? They will hate you for following him. And so Jesus attracted great attention from multitudes and devotion from individuals of all sorts. Yet as a whole, the world still hated him. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 says this, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Does anyone have a desire to live for the Lord? Does anyone have a desire to follow Christ? I love what C.S. Lewis says. He says, if you're looking for comfort, if, you're looking for comfort, if you want to be comfort, uh, comfortable, I don't recommend Christianity. So where do we get this idea that when we, when we come to Christ, it's going to be all roses and chocolate fountains and strawberry cheesecake? And Where does that come from? You will suffer persecution. Someone say we are outsiders. One of the greatest desires for people is the longing to belong. We want to belong to institutions. We want to belong into organizations. We want to belong to a team. We want to belong to a group of friends. We want to belong into certain societies. We want to be accepted. Praise the Lord. Deny it all you want. You can, oh, no, not me. I, I, I'm a... I'm an introvert, or I don't know what the term is. But you have a desire to, do, to belong to something. Sorority or fraternity or whatever it is. People have a desire to belong to certain things. And they want to be accepted in certain things. Praise the Lord. So the believer must be rejected and not accepted by the world. And you have to be okay with it. Praise the Lord. And we're going to get into the example of Jesus and how Jesus went about being rejected. Praise the Lord. Somebody say yes. yes. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 10. If it turns, and we're going to read this together. I'm not going to do all the work. You guys are going to help me, okay? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13, verse 10 through 14. Now, let's read this together on the screen. Here we go. Let's read together. One, two, ready, go. Carries the blood. Somebody say outside. 
And so verse 12. Somebody say outside. outside. 13. Somebody say outside. outside. Verse 14. God bless the reading of his word. The common, what is the, the theme that's going on? Outside. Outside of the gate. Outside of the camp. Praise the Lord. And so verse 10, it starts. It says, we have an altar. And so the author of Hebrews is saying, we have an, an, an altar where we worship. We have an altar where we bring our sacrifice. And this altar is no longer an altar to sacrifice animals. He says, our altar is the cross. This is where we come to worship. This is the center of who we are as believers. The cross, no longer animals, no longer uh, uh, the bull, no longer any of these other things, but our altar where we bring our spiritual sacrifice is the cross. Somebody say yes. yes. That is where we worship. That is where we offer our sacrifice. Praise the Lord. And my, body, my Bible says this in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your body as a living sacrifice. Are you offering your body to the Lord? Is your offering, is your sacrifice acceptable to the Lord? Praise the Lord. And in verse 11, it says, For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned outside the camp. Someone say outside. outside. Now, so there, now let's go a little bit into the Old Testament. Just stay right here. Uh, so, uh, Sister Abby, just stay right there. I'm going <clears> to... <throat> I'm losing my voice because I'm shouting for the Lord, okay? So don't judge me. In the Old Testament, I'm, gonna, uh, uh, I'm going to make reference to uh, the the significance of the sacrifices and why they were uh, uh, offered outside. Exodus chapter 29 verse 14 says, But the flesh of the bull with its skin and its offal, you shall burn with fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. Someone say outside. outside. Leviticus chapter 4 verse 12. If you're taking notes, you can go ahead and read, uh, highlight it, write it down so that you can study in your own time. So the first one is, was Exodus 29, 14, Leviticus chapter 4, verse 12, right, right here. The whole bull he shall carry outside the camp to a clean place where the ashes are poured out and burn it on wood with fire. Where the ashes are poured out, it shall be burned. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 11. Then he shall take off his garments and put on other garments and carry the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. Praise the Lord. So now we see that in the Old Testament that the burning of the offering and the ashes were taken outside. Now the question is, how does God like his sacrifice? Well, 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 well done. Now, the problem with, with Christians, they offer their sacrifice medium rare to the Lord. Your sacrifice is still alive on that altar. Doesn't the Bible say that those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh? So, you know, just a quick history lesson. When someone is crucified on the cross, they die. And so we are crucifying what? The flesh. And the desires of the flesh. And now we live in the spirit. Amen. And so you cannot bring an offering. You cannot bring a sacrifice to the altar that's still alive. Because my God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. And every sacrifice is consumed with fire. Amen. Is God consuming your sacrifice? Yeah, just, just let that marinate for a little bit. Are we giving our best to the Lord? Or are we giving what's left to the Lord? Are you giving your best praise? Or are you just giving whatever's left? Or whatever I have in the, whatever's left in my pocket, I'll give to you. If I have time, I'll come serve. If I'm available, I will do this. 
we offer a sacrifice that, that is acceptable unto the Lord. Amen? And so these offerings, these sacrifices, they were carried where? Outside. In Leviticus chapter 16, verse 27, last scripture, the bull for the sin offering and the goat for the, uh, the sin offering whose blood was brought in to, uh, in to make atonement in the holy place shall be carried outside the camp and they shall burn in the fire uh, their skins, their flesh, and their offal. So we are seeing in the Old Testament that sacrifices were carried outside. They were conducted outside. They were offered outside the camp. And now we go back to Hebrews. In verse 12, it says, Therefore Jesus, someone say therefore. therefore. Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside of the gate. And so Jesus... There was a picture. The Old Testament, uh, uh, the, the Jews, they were, con they were offering sacrifices and they had to take it outside of the temple. They had to take it outside of the tent to offer it. And so Christ did the same thing. Christ had to, be suffer Christ had to suffer outside of the camp. Praise the Lord. Listen to this. Jesus was rejected and casted out of the institution of what he grew up in called Judaism. He was casted out, and he was the, 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 the very institution that he grew up in, he was kicked out. He was rejected and casted out of the traditions, out of the customs, out of the culture that he was raised in. He was rejected and casted out of the camp of the world. So the question is, why do we try to go to places where Jesus was kicked out of? Why do you have a desire to be in a place where Christ doesn't belong? We try to be accepted in places where Jesus was rejected. So if Christ doesn't belong there, if Christ was rejected there, then guess who else is rejected? Me. But the problem is we want to follow Christ and still be accepted in the world. I'm preaching good, I know that. Now what, is this, now, what is the camp of the world? Now, what am I talking about? What is, am I talking about the Boys and Girls Club? Am I talking about Boy Scouts? Pastor Alfred, what are you talking about? Someone say, Pastor Alfred, what are you talking about? He was rejected out of the system of this world, out of the order of this world, out of the lifestyle and the patterns and the structure of this world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. 1 John, if you could put that on the screen, Sister Abby, and we can read this together. So I don't lose anybody. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Let's read this together. Do not love the world. Verse 16. For all that is in the world. And 17. Praise the Lord. And so that is what Jesus was kicked out of. He didn't belong here. Though we are in the world, we are not of the world. Though we are in the hood, we are not of the hood. Praise the Lord. And so Jesus is saying, hey, I don't belong here. I was kicked out of here. I was casted outside of the world. And what am I talking about the world? I'm talking about that. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And he says, do not love the things of this world. Because if you love the things of this world, the love of the Father is not in you. So we're outsiders. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're an outsider. I'm an outsider. And yet he did it so that he might sanctify his people with his own blood. All right, now it's getting, it's getting real theological in here. It's okay. So what does sanctify mean? Sanctify, in all my studies of sanctify, sanctify means set apart. It is separate. It is made holy. It is consecrated. And so Jesus says in John chapter 17, verse 17, 
through 19 he says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have also sent them, which is you, into the world. And in verse 19, he says this. He says, it's a very uh, difficult passage for me to understand. And I've read it so many times. And then it wasn't until I studied the, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 13 where I, I really started to understand what Jesus says in John chapter 17, verse 19. And for them, I sanctify myself that they, may, that they too may be sanctified by the truth. And so what does Jesus mean by saying, I sanctify myself? Verse 13 of uh, uh, Hebrews says, Therefore let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. If sanctify means set apart, Jesus first set himself apart by being casted outside of the gate. And now verse 13 says, let us therefore go to him. No, your sanctification, you being set apart, okay, is not just Jesus just dividing this way. It's that Jesus has left the camp and we follow him outside. Because Christ first separated himself from the world. And us as believers, as true followers of Christ, we have hit the unfollow button on the world. We have unsubscribed. We have canceled our subscription. Uh oh. To the world, and we said, you know what? We're no longer, we've canceled our membership, and now we are following Christ. Do we have any true do I have any true followers of Christ in the house? That's okay with being rejected? That's okay with being not accepted by the world? Or are we trying to do everything we can to look like the world? We sing their songs so that we can fit in. We dress like them. So that we can fit in. You know why no one can tell you're a Christian at work or at school? Because you're not. Is my cutting off? And so the, the reason why Christ can't tell you, the reason why the world can't tell you apart from the crowd is because you are the crowd. But, I'm, but I want you to notice Zacchaeus. I want you to notice the woman with the issue of blood. I want you to notice uh, uh, um, uh, Bartimaeus. Notice how they had to separate themselves from the crowd, and Jesus saw them. Jesus looked, up to, looked at Zacchaeus and said, Man, Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. Why what, did Jesus notice them? You know why? Because they stepped out of the crowd. Uh -huh. Biggest barrier to Jesus was not a wall, was not a fence. It was a crowd. Is the crowd stopping you? Or do you look just like them? You sound just like them. You have the same interest as them. And so Christ says, first, I sanctify myself by leaving this world. Who's, who's going to join me? He draws a hard line in the sand. He says, who's with me? Let me ask you, is anyone here? Have a, does anyone here have a desire to follow Christ? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that means leaving the pleasure of this world. Now listen to this. If you want to get to the Father, you have to go outside. If you want to get to the Father, you have to go outside. That means leaving the pleasures of this world. That means forsaking the lust of the flesh, forsaking the lust of the eyes, forsaking the pride of life. That means you are telling the world, I am done. I'm finished. Not I'm done for a season, and I'll come back around. That's the thing with believers. We say, I'm going to follow you, Christ. Well, I'll, I'll be right back. Just for, you know, I just got to live holy because mom's getting on me. You know, man, my mom, my grandma keep getting on me. So, so I'll follow you, Christ, but, but just keep my, my membership in the world. Praise the Lord. No, once you, once you, once you've followed Christ, man, that means you have to reject everything that's of the world. A total, they, we call it in the military, we call it an about face. We do a partial face. We just, just a little bit. It's a, a full 180 degree turn. Praise the Lord. In verse 14, for we, for here we have no continuing in the city. So the author of Hebrews is saying, look, this world has nothing for us. 
but we seek the one to come. How many guys know that? Jesus is returning. Praise the Lord. And I'm looking forward to the day. Because in my Father's house, there are many mansions. So the pleasures of this world, that is the best it's going to get for you. That's the best it's going to get for you. But I'm telling you, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor entered into the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I'm telling you, God has something prepared for you that is beyond what you can imagine. It's beyond what you can comprehend. Romans chapter 8, verse 18, it says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed in you. How long is the average life here on this earth? Right? And 100 if you're a vegan. Right? And so why put it all in those short uh, span of life? And why risk your eternity? Praise the Lord. So for here we have no continuing of the city. Jesus says, hey, I got nothing here. There's nothing here for me. Christ was willing to forsake all that this world had to offer. Are you willing to do the same? I'm telling you, because this world has nothing for me. All I, all I get from this world is bills and loans and debt and parking tickets. and That's all I have in this world. Just, uh, that's why me and my wife, we don't check our mail. Or maybe I don't check my mail. Because I already know what's coming in. Praise the Lord. And so in my Father's house, there are many mansions. And I'm going to close with this scripture. James chapter 4, verse 4. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Whoever wants to be a friend of this world is an enemy of God. Praise the Lord. And so for us as believers, we are outsiders. And I understand rejection is a cold, is, it, it's, a, it's a tough pill to swallow. No one wants to be rejected. As I stated earlier, everyone wants to belong to something. We want to belong to a group of friends. We want to belong to that basketball team. We want to fit in. I remember when I grew up, I remember going, uh, growing up in high school, everyone wanted, to, everyone wanted to hang out with the cool kids. They wanted to be accepted. Praise the Lord. But when you, are, when you come to Christ, you don't, those things are not, those things, we do not belong to them. You are a child of God. You are sanctified. You are set apart. Hallelujah. You're not just born again. You're not, you're not just born. You're being transformed. Praise the Lord. So there is a process called sanctification, and that means you are following Christ, but you're going outside the camp. You're going outside the gate. There's a, there's a, there's a, a saying that people say, well, you know, Jesus, you know, he was always hanging out with sinners. How many guys ever heard that? You say, oh, you know, you know, uh, the Christ always was hanging out with all the sinners. You know, no, Jesus wasn't hanging out with sinners. The sinners were hanging out with Jesus. He wasn't going to them. They came to him. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't say, oh, let me go to the club and see what's going on over here. No. The sinners, they came to Jesus. They said, there's something about that man. There's something, of the, there's something about him that I want. Hallelujah. Now the question is, are sinners hanging out with you? Or are you going out to them? That's the part where you start playing. Hallelujah. That's the Jesus wasn't looking to fit in. He wasn't trying to fit into a society. He wasn't trying to fit into a club. Jesus said, I'm okay with being casted out of this world because this world has nothing to give. But here, I'm here to tell you something. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but just my word will by no means pass away. Stop seeking acceptance into places where Jesus was rejected. Stop looking to fit in where Christ doesn't even fit in. We are outsiders. Christ also suffered outside the camp, and thus we should bear his reproach that he endured. And I understand you will be laughed at. I remember being deployed. I was deployed, and, and they made fun of me. They said, oh, that's the church boy. And I just said, yes. Oh, yeah. Is that it? Is that all you have? 
Oh, there goes Ledoux. He's going to church again. You know, here goes the, the, the Christian boy. Yeah. And I said, yes, yeah, that's me. But guess what? Throughout the weeks, throughout the months when I was deployed, guess who they were coming to? When their girlfriends, you know, when they got that text message like, hey, man, hey, uh, hey we saw your, uh, your girl. Uh, and guess who they came to when they were going through difficult times? See, they're, they're, you know, you, they're, they're, they're real bold when, you, when they're in groups, but when they come to you one-on-one, I'm telling you, Jesus says, man, I come to sanctify them, sanctify them by truth. He says, I want to sanctify them with my own blood. But first Christ said, in order for me to sanctify you, I sanctify myself. In order for you to be sanctified by his blood, you have to go outside the camp because that's where the sacrifices were offered. And so when we come to Christ, we have to first go outside. If you want to go to the Father, you have to go outside. That's the part where you hit the lights. Forgiveness is bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born. Blood of Jesus Christ. Just continue to play. Let's just stand to our feet as we close. I don't want to let this opportunity to pass. Just real soft, real soft. As the word of God has gone forth, the Bible says it will go forth and it will do what it's supposed to do. It will not return void. And so for if there's anyone here who has not received Jesus Christ, if there's anyone who has not received salvation of Christ, today is your moment. Today is your day. The day of salvation is today. And I understand you have to hit the unscribe button. You have to make a big decision in your life. You have to leave the pleasures of this world. You have to leave that all this world has offered. And you have to follow Christ outside. For those who are willing to be an outsider, if those who are willing to be rejected, if those are willing to be uh, unaccepted by the world, as we sing this song again, the altar is open. My Bible says we have an altar, and that is the cross. If you're willing, if God, if the, feel the Holy Spirit tugging on your heart, today is your day. The day of salvation is today. Don't wait for tomorrow because tomorrow will not come. Don't wait for next week because we do not know what will happen. Jesus says that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus says, I come to give life and life more abundantly at this time. So as our choir, as they sing, the altar is open. For those who are willing to take a step and say, I'm leaving the world. I'm leaving this camp. I'm leaving this organization. I'm leaving the patterns, the lifestyle of this world. But I'm here to tell you that whoever is in Christ is a new creation. All things have passed. And behold, all things are made new. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. Here we go. Oh, come to the altar. Open. The altar the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious open. blood of open. Jesus Christ. Hey, oh, come to yeah. the altar. The Father's arms are Blood of Jesus One more time, hey. Christ. Oh, 
family you will be casted down they'll talk about you but I don't I don't know about you but wherever Christ goes that's where I want to be and so Christ was rejected he was rejected in his own hometown he was rejected by his own people he was rejected by his own family so as we sing this song one more time, and even if you've given your life to Christ already, we just want to go before the Lord and worship, and we want to thank Him for the sacrifice that He has paid on the cross outside of the camp, outside of this world. So as we sing this song one more time, I want you to meditate on the Lord. And the altar is still open because we want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. And if you have not received Christ, I know you're going to have to take that first step I know in NA and AA, they talk about 12 steps, but when you come to Christ, you just got to take one. The altar is open. One more time, church. The precious blood of Jesus. Oh, come. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are
Spirit of the Lord is here, and when the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty, freedom in your heart, freedom in your mind, freedom in your soul. of him who called you out of darkness in to his marvelous light. He's called you out of darkness. Just for, uh, right now, if you could, for those who have already accepted Christ, for those who have already kicked the world to the curb, I want you to stretch forth your hands and just let's pray for these. The Bible says that all of heaven rejoices when one sinner gives their life to the Lord. When one sinner repents, heaven is rejoicing right now. So let's pray for these young people. Church, continue to pray. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, any intercessors in the house? Do we have any intercessors in the house? Do I have any prayer warriors in the house? Come on, I want you to pray heaven down right now in the name of Jesus. Continue to minister. Continue to release that sound. Yeah. Healing in the name of Jesus. Restoration in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Set them free. Break the chains of bondage in the name of Jesus. Sickness, no more. Cancer, no more. Diabetes, no more. We declare your healing in the name of Jesus. Whoa. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Hey. for everyone here. I want to pray for those at the altar and I want to pray for our church. For those at the altar, you've heard the word. Christ gave his life as a sacrifice. He was the propitiation for our sins. He was the substitute for our sins. He gave his life as a sin offering for your sins. Follow him outside the gate. Follow him outside the camp. The world has nothing for you. So this morning, let me, let's pray for those here at the altar. God, I pray for this young woman. Lord, I pray that your grace be over them. Lord, I pray that your grace that is sufficient. Lord, I pray that she lives a life sanctified, holy to you. For all those who who have taken a step of faith to the altar and have dedicated their life to you. Lord, I pray that you strengthen their hearts. Although the world will reject them, although they will not be accepted in this world, Lord, we thank you for the courage that you have given them to take that first step. They've decided to stand out of the crowd. They have decided to step out of the crowd. And Lord, we pray that we don't want to be a part of the crowd. We want to live for you. And we are willing to 
we are willing to take a step of faith, Lord God, and we are willing to follow you outside the gate. So, Lord, I lift them up to you in prayer. And, Lord, if there's anyone here, Lord God, who's a, who is still battling, who's still wrestling with you, Father, I pray that you release them, Lord God. Your word says that you will melt the heart of stone and you will give us a heart of flesh. So, Lord, can continue to knock on the door of their hearts. Lord, continue to speak to them. Your Holy Spirit, reveal truth to them. So we declare these things in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Lord, we repent of all sin. We turn from the sin. We turn from the pleasures of this world. And, Lord, we want to live a holy, sanctified life for you. So we declare that right now in the name of Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus. Was born with precious blood of One more time before we close. Oh, come. Oh, come to him, the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born. Christ. One more time. Oh, come to hear the answer. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody give God some glory. Somebody give God praise. Somebody worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, my mama says, oh, clap. Clap those hands, all ye nations. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say breakthrough tell you, there is deliverance at the cross. There is healing at the cross. I'm telling you, you know what? It's better on this side. You know, it's better outside of the camp of the world. I love what Psalmist David says. He says, better is one day in your courts <laughs> than a thousand elsewhere. He says, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in your house than to dwell in the tents of the world. Is it that comfortable in the world? Is it that nice out there? Praise the Lord. Okay, the sermon's over. Okay, the sermon, the sermon's over. Praise the Lord. James, you got to stop playing because you're going to make me keep preaching, okay? you got to make me... Uh, gonna... But praise the Lord. Hey, uh, amen. How many of you guys received that word this morning? Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. We're outsiders. Praise the Lord. And so... Uh, Quick announcement. Um, okay, after that, so, okay. And so that is our service for today. And so for those who are tuning on, on online, thank you so much. Okay, we are going to release you, give you an early release. So God bless you. God bless you online. We love you. We will see you next week.